Hey not me's, I am me, and this is a video demo of Benthos Studio to replace the previous video demo of Benthos Studio because I have added a bunch of stuff, uh, so we need to cover all that stuff now. If you don't know what Benthos is, well then go away, there is a better video uh, that you should start off with, I'll put it in the description. Now what Benthos Studio is, is it's a visual application for building and editing Benthos configs and it comes with a bunch of cool testing utilities and, and linting and all that good stuff uh, which we'll see in this video uh, and then finally it's also a place where you can manage your Benthos uh, deployment configuration so you can you can do versioning and scaling and uh, get a live view of, of what Benthos instances are doing when you deploy them in your own infrastructure. Uh, we'll get a little taste of that in this video but then I've also got other videos that dig into some of this stuff in more detail. So the first thing you're going to do when you go to studio.benthos.dev is log in. Uh, there's a few options here. I'm going to pick DigitalOcean. Uh, please don't hack me. Now what you're going to get is this sort of user page um, where you get some news items and you can create configs that only you can access by creating a session. Um, but I'm actually going to create an organization here because I might have a friend one day and I'm going to want to share my configs with somebody else. And that's what organizations let you do. So um, on this page, now that I've created it, um, I've got on the right this section where I can create invitation URLs. That's how you get new people into your organization. Um, and then what I'm going to do is create a session. So sessions are places where you can create um, configs. It's just a way of organizing them. I'm going to call this session get catted. You'll see why later. Now, what I'm going to do is create a config. I'm going to add a file. Uh, this is just a stream pipeline, um, which is just a typical Benthos config. I'm going to call this main.yaml. And this is the visual editor. So the first thing that you'll see is basically just a bunch of buttons because we don't have a, we have an empty config. And I'm going to add an input. And that gives me this view of all the inputs. I'm going to add a generate input for this particular one because I'm just going to generate a bunch of data. Um, and that is a essentially just a mapping that we execute on an interval. I'm going to create an ID, a name, uh, let's add an email, which is just generated, it's just fake uh, data that we're generating. And I'm going to generate data at a one second interval. And then you can now see that in the visual editor. So this is just an input that's basically just floating. It's not doing anything because there's no other components, but I can click this to edit the config. And I can also see these run events which shows you what events um, have, have essentially happened within this config. So right now we've just produced some data, but it hasn't, nothing's happened to it. Uh, so it's not particularly interesting. So let's do something interesting next. What I'm actually going to be doing in this demo is generating data, and then I'm going to be enriching that data uh, by hitting uh, an API. So the API I've picked is catfact.ninja. Um, and every time you hit this API with a get request, you get this JSON blob. Um, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to essentially merge that back into the data that I'm generating. So to do that, I'm going to use an HTTP processor, uh, which is basically a Benthos processor that for every message that flows through, we're going to hit the uh, given API. It's just a get request. It's a very simple config. Now, when I click this um, run events tab for, for a particular component, we'll actually see some interesting stuff. Now, what you'll notice is that both events are the exact same because the data wasn't changed. And we've actually got this little yellow marker on the component. What that means is Benthos Studio can't show you what's going to happen to the data um, because it's not going to make HTTP requests or any network calls on your behalf. Um, so you can you can run this uh, config yourself and have the events um, shown in the UI, which I'll show you in a minute. Uh, but for now, what we can do is we can actually mock um, the requests um, in this UI uh, by going to the API, we'll copy the data and then we click uh, mock this component and we can just add in um, a little mapping that essentially takes um, the input and forms it into whatever we're expecting the API to do. So I've just put in this dummy. So now my config with this mocked um, processor in it is showing us the new events. And as you can see, the, the contents gets completely replaced by the uh, request response, which is what would happen in practice. Um, and this highlights an issue with our config because we don't actually want to do that. We don't want to completely replace the data with what came back from the cat, cat fact API. What we want to do is we want to enrich the data. So to do that, we have a, we use a branch processor and a branch processor is a processor that lets you execute child processes and then merge them back in. And what we're going to be doing is creating an empty payload, running our cat fact HTTP processor, um, and then 
uh, merging the data back into the original payload with these mappings. Now, if I just add that, um, we now have a, an HTTP processor followed by branch. Um, this is actually going to cause a config error because we can't have a branch processor without a, a, at least one child processor. Uh, but what I'm just going to do is I'm just going to move my cat fact HTTP processor into the branch and that fixes things. So now this is actually uh, pretty much what we want um, in terms of our processing. So what we do is our HTTP processor gets no data in uh, due to the branch input map and then it, it creates the API response and then the branch is what's doing the actual merge of that data which you can see in this produced um, event <clears throat> we've now merged the original data and the other thing now at any point in our visual editor we can click this button at the top and it shows us the actual YAML config that's what we can actually give to Benthos and, and use to run it that always exists that's the source of truth for this entire config is this YAML backed up bit um, so you've always got that now to finish off our config, we need to add an output. And in this case, I am going to go with, let's do a standard out. So we're just gonna write the data <clears throat> out for us to view. And then I can also just click this to show you the events. We've only got the one event because one, one message gets uh, written to it, which is this generated data with the cat fact merged in. And then finally, I'm going to add another mapping to my processes just to make things interesting. Um, the problem I see with this is we've just got these JSON blobs coming out, um, but I can I can just change that. Uh, so for example, I can, I can change it to YAML, and that means our run event at the output level is now YAML. Um, some people I've heard on the internet don't actually like YAML, um, so maybe we'll, maybe we'll change this to, to XML. Everybody loves XML. Everybody has always loved XML. Um, and as you can see, as we're making these changes, the visual editor is kind of executing this um, with our mark and just giving you a, a, a gist of, of what happens. Um, and that's that. Now we have a config. Now, the next thing I'm going to show you is version control in Benthos Studio. So Benthos Studio has uh, Git support, and that allows you to track changes over time, roll back, create branches, all that good stuff. Uh, this is the only feature I'm going to be showing in this video that's not available for free accounts. So I'm just going to give myself access. By the time this video comes out, you will be able to subscribe um, to get this functionality. And now that I've got access, what I can do is I can click initialize and that allows me to pick a default branch name um, and it initializes a Git repository around this session. So all the files included in my session are part of this Git repository. Um, and then what I can do is I can add the changes that I currently have, create a commit with a commit message. And what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna make a modification to my config just to demonstrate how this stuff works. So I'm gonna delete this uh, XML mapping and what else are we going to do I'm going to add a I'm going to swap it out for a mutation and we're just going to add some some new field uh, let's just uppercase the um, the name field and then as you can see in the run events that's now being reflected in the config run and actually let's change this a bit more Add some exclamation marks that people take us seriously. And here you go, you can see the change in the UI. So let's go back to the YAML view. You can see the actual textual changes that have happened here. And now if I go back to the session view, you can see that there's this uh, unstaged change. And if I click it, I can actually see the diff of the YAML config itself. So this allows me to view what was the actual change that I just made in the UI. Um, and then you can close that and if we're happy we can add that change to become staged and then I can commit it so once I've committed it um, that's it it's, it's essentially saved and if I view the logs it's that commit is always going to be there now there's obviously so much more to show with git but I'm going to move on but if you're not familiar with git uh, other stuff that this allows you to do is create backups, uh, rollbacks, you can have feature branches, uh, it allows you to do uh, clever uh, review flows uh, when collaborating with other teams, um, automated backups, that sort of stuff. Okay, now the final and way coolest uh, feature I'm going to show you in this video is called deployments. 
Um, I have other videos that dig into this in more detail, so I'm just going to briefly touch on what deployments are, but essentially it's a way of using Benthos Studio to manage and scale out the configs that Benthos instances are running that you've deployed yourself anywhere you like. So you can deploy Benthos in Kubernetes, for example, and just have a, a, a whole cluster of them. And you can use Benthos Studio to decide which configs are being run. You can update them and you can have multiple sets of configs uh, partitioned by deployment um, and they can be scaled out to those nodes automatically. Now, when you create a deployment, you give it a name, uh, you give it a weight, and we've only got one config in our session, so there's only one config to um, execute with this deployment. And I'm gonna jump straight ahead and create my no tokens. So to no tokens are essentially your API keys that the Benthos instances use to authenticate themselves against your Benthos Studio session. Um, and again, you give it a name, it has a TTL. Ideally, you rotate these somewhat frequently. Um, and then what I've got on this page that gives you the ID and the secret you've generated, um, we've got some useful uh, commands to run. Um, I'm just going to copy paste the local config and if I run that now in a CLI, um, I'm going to add a, a small command to the end called send traces. What's going to happen now is this essentially runs Benthos um, against a studio session authenticated with the key I just created and it will then see that there's only one deployment so it gets allocated the deployment um, and then Benthos will read the config and execute the config and because I've added send traces to the end by default no data other than some very basic metrics gets sent back to Benthos Studio and that allows you to see in the UI here how many nodes are running and what they're doing um, but because I added send traces I can just click on any of these individual components and if I go back to the run events um, what will eventually happen is this will become populated with data here you go, that came back from the Benthos instance that's actually running the configs. This is real data that's come through, so we're no longer seeing mocks or anything like that. We're actually hitting the API for realsies here, and we're seeing what, what actually happens um, as that data comes through. Now, deployments are super cool because it's a very nice UI for, for managing um, which configs are being run. Um, and you've got useful utilities like this for, for testing, maybe like staging pipelines and stuff like that you'd want to send the traces back for. But also I can make changes to the configs now um, and it will automatically be rolled out to all the Benthos instances that are, are running the config. So I can change this uh, mutation processor back to format XML. Um, and as soon as I've submitted that, that config has now been changed. If I go to the run events, you can see that eventually um, the deployment that's actually running this config gets updated and sends its traces back. So now we can actually see in real time um, that config has, has been rolled out and everything's synced up. Um, and that's uh, that's basically it. That's all I wanted to show in this video. Um, hopefully that's been interesting. Um, give it a try. Almost everything I've shown you here is, is possible to use with a free account. And don't think it ends there. I'm going to be constantly adding in new goodies, uh, new features, new functionality. Um, so keep an eye on this space, people.